so what I'm going to talk about is why I think hooks are a great abstraction model, and why I think they apply well to how we started this discussion, basically how to separate the model from the view in a, in a good way. Because I think this is one of, one of the challenges which arise in front-end architecture. And what we're going to do is create a, I mean, walk through a very simple component and then get some rules or guidelines on to how to, how to do this, how to create the model using hooks and how to create the view and put them together. And in the end, uh, I'm just going to, I mean, we're going to look at, at the benefits of going with this approach. So the component that we're going to look at is a toggler component, which is a really simple component that lets you go back and forth through a set of values. So you have like some really simple UI, two buttons, one to go to the previous value, one to go to the next one and display the current value in the middle. Um, we can assume that we get the, this set of values through props and it can be a simple array of strings like it's here or, or it can be even a more complex uh, array of data. And we're looking at uh, a way to build this component. And I, I like to go in a, a top-down approach. So kind of designing the way this component should look like it should get this uh, array of props and then uh, an initial index. So what's the value that's going to be displayed initially? And then maybe a non-value change callback. So we can hook into the new value that has been recently updated. And then uh, how we're going to do this is use the model uh, or use a hook to, to create the model one or multiple hooks, which are 100% UI independent. And all they can do is manipulate data and change state. And is the source of truth for our view, which the view is going to be just a dumb component, a simple component, which renders itself based on props. If we were to look at a high overview of how this this would look like is the use toggler, which implements our model and exposes the interface. Then the UI, which uh, creates the view and exposes the interface. And then we have the integration point, which is the final toggler component, which we're also going to consume. Yeah, so sketching out these interfaces would be like, for the model, we need the data array. Obviously, we need an initial index and the on value change callback. Yeah, which can be a no function initially. And in terms of what this returns, we care about the current value. We need to have a way to go back and forward. So a previous function and the next function. And then it's important to know when we, you reached a certain threshold so or when you're at one of the bounds of the array. So we could have some booleans like is lower bound and is upper bound. This would help to uh maybe display on the ui or disabled button so you can't go lower than the first item in the array or higher than the last one this is how this is how the model would look like and then on the ui side again a current value which is just a string and then a callback which gets called when the next button is pressed similar for the previous one and is lower bound and is upper bound just for disabling the buttons if needed. So we get to these two interfaces which are independent of each other and which are put together and integrated in the integration point, which is the toggler component uh, 
the benefit of going like this would be that I can I can have the hook implement the model. I can test it independently, and I can have the UI again implement the view, test it independently, uh, and swap each other out whenever I want, as long as I keep the interfaces working together, basically. So yeah, these these are the benefits: the hard separation, the way in which I can test, and the bonus that yeah, I have them composable and reusable by just being able to swap them out uh, whenever I need that. Uh, I'll have the implementation example up on my GitHub, but right now, let's go to the demo part, which I have here. It's a create React app with uh, React Native Web, and it just displays the toggler, which is yeah very similar to the mockup in Excalibur that we've seen previously. In terms of how it's implemented, uh, we conform to the interfaces that we decided upon earlier. So the use toggler takes the data, the initial index, and the on-value change, and the implementation is really not the point here because it's really simple, like a way to go forward, a way to go backwards and keep yourself within bounds, uh, the current value and the booleans, which tell you if you're at one of the ends and then a use effect to trigger the on value change whenever current value has updated. Again, same interface exported as uh, I mean, return from the hook as we've uh, sketched it out earlier. And at this point, after I implemented this, I'm ready to go ahead and test it. And I can do that using the amazing uh, React Hooks testing library. And I can test like it goes to the next value. So whenever I call next, the, I assert that the value gets updated correctly, similar to going to the previous value testing if it reaches a lower bound and the lower bound boolean is correct um, very similar for the upper bound or for the on value change that it gets called with the right arguments or even like trying to uh, make it go out of bounds and expecting that it doesn't for the either the lower bound or the upper bound uh, and if I go ahead and run this, basically I have hopefully everything <laughs> passing. Yeah. And in a similar way, I can go ahead and implement the UI. And I implement the same interface that we discussed about with an on next callback and on previous uh, current value and the two bound. And then the UI is just really simple one button for the previous, one for the next, uh, and the label being displayed here. Uh, as long, I, I mean, as soon as I'm done with this, I can go ahead and test it. I can use uh, the testing library for, for React or React Native um, and test that the UI reflects basically the props so that it renders the buttons disabled when is lower bound. Uh, is true or same for the upper bound or if both of them are true. And then after I, I'm done with this, I just have to put them together in the index here in the integration point, which uh, as we saw in Excalibur is this model part at the top and then it returns the UI. So as long as these two interfaces work together, uh, everything everything is going to be fine. My components is going to be fine. I can swap uh, each each one for the other. Yeah, that would be that would be it from my side, and I'm waiting for any any questions. All right, thanks a lot. Uh, um, I, I think we moved to the discussion. Uh, now, let's hope we don't only finish the audience because it means we don't get any questions. So. Let's see. But I, I think it makes sense what you did, that you separated this uh, logic uh, from, from the view. Easy to test. 
uh, the is easier to develop. Uh, did anyone else have any any thoughts on thoughts on Kalin's approach? Yeah, I I really like the approach you took there because I've seen so many React projects where there's like a for example, a toggler component with just like use effects after use effects and just all of the code is just inside the component and abstracting that into a hook, making it easily testable and making it a like a functional hook. So it returns something given the input. It's makes makes life a, li a lot easier. And at the same point, it makes it so much more testable and reliable. So you can just run the unit test and trust it works. Not You don't have to do like end to end testing at that point. Oh, we have our first question. So you have you, you test the integration layer as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it depends on the complexity of the yeah of the integration of the component itself. I'd say usually if the model works and the view, if the model and the view work uh, independently and they pass the test independently, I don't think there's much benefit to testing the integration layer. You can either choose to test only the integration layer or choose these two units uh, independently. Mm -hmm. At least that's my take on it. So what's your what's your view on tools like Cypress or this like that uh, yeah black black box testing black, black box testing that you you test uh, so that you don't know anything about the implementation you don't know if it's React or whatever it's just a uh, it's a user interface. So how does that fit uh, with everything? I like that. Uh, I mean, it's, it's the same kind of the same goal here as well, because you're trying to test interfaces in an implementation independent way, kind of using the testing library or uh, asserting certain returned values or certain behaviors that are not really uh, focusing or checking anything that's in the implementation dependent. So yeah. Uh, it could be a good option as well, but then it would mean that you test the integration layer, obviously. Yeah, yeah. That's a thing. Is it possible to implement hooks interface without React uh, library dependencies? So it's like uh, I guess the point is that you would uh, do like something like hooks without React itself. Yeah, I think you can. Uh... The important part here, and I don't think it's really that much focused on React, but it's just using React as a proof of concept, let's say, is the fact that you create some independent interface which work together uh, in a certain, I mean, in an integration point. But uh, yeah, you could implement it in any framework, like keep your logic or your model split up in how many modules or services you want, test them independently, have some UI that knows how to render itself uh, based on some inputs, let's say, and then put them together to achieve the final result. So yeah, I think it's possible. 